Um, yeah, what we were hoping to talk to you uh, today about was just to get a little bit of feedback on this project that we're working on and that we're getting ready to take to a, uh, the International Genetically Engineered Machines Competition, what's coming up in two weeks. Okay. And um, so first of all, I'd, I'd like to ask if you're okay with this interview being recorded. Um, the only reason that we're doing this is that uh, one aspect of the project is that we put up all, all of our information up onto an online open access website where everyone can view our results. And so that way this would give everyone else a chance to hear these interviews. Do, do you feel comfortable with that, um, if this was to be put up on YouTube and then directed to our, our wiki this way? That'll be fine. Awesome. Great. So um, maybe if I could just start then uh, with asking you to intro introduce yourself a little bit and, and your background, if you don't mind, just uh, so that we can kind of have that here in the conversation. Sure. My name is William Sonchuk. I'm a reservoir engineer working at Arc Resources. I graduated from the University of Calgary with a mechanical engineering degree and have been working in the oil and gas industry for about 16 years. Great. Thank you so much. So um, what we just wanted to ask you, first of all, I'll give you a little bit of a background on what we're doing with our project. And then uh, I just wanted to ask you a few questions about your opinions and thoughts on it. Um, you know, they can be uh, your personal opinions or uh, wh whatever way you'd wish to direct it. So what we're, what we're really trying to do is to develop a system that uses uh, genetically modified bacteria to be able to detect and remediate various toxins in tailings ponds. Um, one of these examples being naphthenic acids. And this process is being performed in an enclosed bioreactor system that we're developing where the bacteria will be housed. We'll take in the tailings into it, water as input into the system and convert those toxins into hydrocarbons. And these hydrocarbons can then be extracted from the bioreactor. So it must be heavy and hydrocarbons. Yes, yes, so that's what we're hoping. So not yeah. light hydrocarbon like um, butane, propane is probably, what do you call it, um, uh, there's a word for it, I can't remember what it's called, but that heavy, heavy gunk. Yeah, 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 those okay. kind of things. So basically converting, um, removing the carboxylic acid group from these naphthenic acids, converting them into uh, hydrocarbon derivatives, which we were extracting using a belt skimmer technology, so a hydrophobic surface that would actually pick them up selectively against uh, other things in the water layer. Okay. Um, the bacteria that we're using contains a built-in genetic kill switch which will destroy them if they ever escape the bioreactor environment. So, um, and how is that done? So is, is the bioreactor environment of a different pressure or temperature than, than ambient? No, so we're, we're doing it through the selectivity, or two ways actually. Basically, um, a compound that's available within the bioreactor system that would not be available in the natural environment. And when the bacteria no longer have that um, compound available, then the bacteria die um, because they're reliant on that compound. And as a second layer of control, um, it also uh, basically activates a uh, enzyme that chews up the DNA and destroys that DNA inside the cell. Okay. So we we'd originally just start our project, contacted individuals from industry, and really tried to design our project to address major concerns that they had in regards to the design and construction of the system. And now we're kind of moving to the point where we really have a solid idea of how this is going, and we wanted to come back and um, ask individuals you know, if what else they could see could be improved now that we can describe the system uh, a little better, like, like I've just mentioned. So with this in mind, if this technology proceeds to market, do you think it will be useful in an oil sand setting? Without a doubt, yes. Great. Yes, as you're well aware, uh, the oil and gra the extraction process associated with heavy oil does leave a bit of uh, contaminants in, in, in the effluent stream, which is typically, uh, as you know, put into the tailings pond, and they usually rely on the gravity segregation over time to, to deal with the issue. But if there's a better way to deal with it quicker and harmlessly, then I think that's a good idea. Great. And do you have any major concerns with this technology or anything that first comes to mind? At the moment, no, uh, but other than, uh, I guess the one concern that I would have as a, as a, as a, uh, perhaps an affected stakeholder is the ability for this product to be harmless 
in ambient conditions. As you mentioned, that um, uh, in a bioreactor, it, it is quite effective at what it does, but just making sure that if something should ever happen, be it a puncture, an explosion, or whatever, that the escape of the um, uh, bio, biochemically gene- uh, genocide, or what about, uh, engineered uh, product does not become harmful to the environment or to humans. Yes, definitely. So do you feel a little more at ease then with the kill switch mechanism that I described, or do you feel that other layers of protection um, and uh, safety measures should be included? Um, Given my history with the oil and gas industry, there's definitely a a bit of a redundancy in the protection of of, uh, natural and environmental resources. So having a kill switch is a good idea, but I always believe that having a secondary uh, safety factor built is also a prudent move uh, before commercialization. Definitely. Great. And uh, then I'd, I guess I'd ask going forward then on the commercialization front, do you foresee any obstacles that we could face um, as this project proceeds from being a concept to a product? Yes, and uh, again, being an industry proponent, the biggest thing in any uh, uh, product or project is cost. Uh, you have to compare whatever you're doing to the cost of the status quo. And if the cost of what you're doing or proposing is significantly more expensive than what the current options are, it'll be very hard to adopt technology. Yes, definitely. Great. So do you have any uh, uh, suggestions uh, for now or something that we should foresee in the future on how we could be able to continue um, and improve our system towards that end? Uh, unfortunately, not knowing enough. Uh, again, my background is mechanical engineering. I've, I've spent pretty much all of my career as, as a reservoir engineer. So when it comes to microbiology or genetics, uh, I'm afraid I am relatively uneducated in those areas and I wouldn't be able to provide uh, any insight as to how to improve what you currently have. No problem. I'm, I'm sorry. I know all of this is a, a little vague and I haven't given you a lot of details. Um, And then I just have one last general question. Um, Do you feel there is a push for using alternative methods for oil sand remediation using things like biology, microbial or synthetic? I believe there is. Again, what currently is happening in my mind, and I'm sure in in, in the the majority of the people who you talk to, the current process isn't sufficient. Well, it does work. It takes a long time for it to be effective, and it must hopefully be a better, more uh, a quicker way to deal with these issues so that the potential for environmental contamination is minimized if not completely eliminated. Definitely. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Um, do you have any questions that you'd like me to answer, or anything related to what we talked about? I guess the only question I have is how far advanced is your research slash development of this particular bioreactor? Is this, uh, are, are you still really much in, in the, uh, uh, what do you call it, design and, uh, and research phase? Or are you guys looking at physically constructing a something that can be tested in a, in a, even if in a small scale in a laboratory setting? So we've uh, really tried to move past the design point at this, at this particular moment. We have uh, what we think is a proof of concept that we are capable, to t- capable of taking these toxins and converting them into hydrocarbons and able to upgrade those hydrocarbons that we produce by removing some of the nitrogen and sulfur groups attached to them. Uh, we've also been able to test our kill switch and show that there are components of it that are working. So we're really just starting to move past that initial characterization kind of phase and move towards, you know, is there any potential for optimizing these systems, for increasing their efficiencies, and also for scale up. So actually just last week we tried scaling things up a little bit um, using a bioreactor that was a few liters rather than just in uh, small test tubes. Um, and uh, we're, we're analyzing a lot of that now. So just starting to move past the initial characterization and into optimization. Well, you know what, gentlemen, that sounds very interesting. And uh, I believe that if you guys can make this work, you'll have something that should be very uh, interesting and of high demand. And I do wish you, gentlemen, the best of luck. Well, thank you so much. And again, thank you very much for your time and uh, agreeing to do this. I apologize if it was short notice <laughs> and, and everything, but this.